Hi everyone, uh, this is Carles Federico, uh, the CEO of Lender Market. And today I'm going to do my first webinar, and it's uh, together with uh, with Juan Saldar Iraga, who is the founder of uh, Rapid Credit. is one of our newest uh, additions to the platform, and I hope that today it's a good session for everyone to understand a bit more about uh, what Rapid Credit does what do they do good and how Colombia is actually an upcoming market that could be quite interesting for everyone. So uh, without further ado, if it's okay, Juan, you can introduce yourself a bit on, on who are you in, in Rapid Credit and what has been happening in the last few years uh, in, in your company. Thanks, Carles. A pleasure to be here with uh, you and uh, with Lender Market. Uh... For those who don't know me, my name is Juan Esteban Saldarriaga. I'm Colombian. I'm one of the co-founders of Rapid Credit, one of the first fintechs here in Colombia 10 years ago. Um, I'm also part of the Colombian Fintech Association, was president for the first two years. Uh, uh, we started 13 companies and today uh, it's more than 360 companies under the industry group. As you said, Colombia, Colombia is a... a, a high potential market in fintech today is the third ecosystem in latam uh, behind mexico and brazil uh, so there's a so there's a very big potential here in colombia for the development of uh, online lending uh, rapid credit was one of the first online lenders here and after these 10 years we've done more than 3.5 million loans and uh, we're very focused on inclusion especially for young people and women and uh, Hopefully, with the help of lender market, keep on growing and, and delivering inclusion to to thousands of thousands of, of customers here in Colombia. Okay, thank you. Yes, let's go later a bit later in depth into this inclusion. Let's call it uh, financial inclusion that Rapid Credit is so focused on. I feel it's one of uh, the USPs uh, that uh, Rapid Credit has. It's a bit different than than the competitors, let's say, in that matter. But let's uh, introduce a bit Colombia to, to all the investors. Uh, in Europe, we know Colombia, but it always feels it's a bit of a far, far market. So if you can tell us a bit more about uh, what's like the current trends in the lending market in Colombia and what makes Colombia such an attractive market for, let's say, European investors. Okay, so um, Colombia, um... Uh, has a population around 54 million people, 36 million adults. Um, may I share a screenshot here? So sorry, it's in Spanish, but uh, probably can help. I don't see if you see my screen. My screen there. Yes, we can see the screen. Um, sorry, it's in Spanish, but uh, this is uh, showing how much of uh, the uh, credit to GDP ratio uh, in the region. So Colombia presently has a 44% of credit to GDP. So it's it's one of the lowest still in, in LATAM, uh, far away from, from Brazil, which is 70% and Ecuador, for example. Um, Mexico has a big potential and that's why a lot of fintechs are developing in Mexico with, with a population of 120. But in Colombia, uh, 36 million adults, uh, of which only 30% have a loan with a financial institute, a regulated financial institution. So um, there's more than uh, 18 million adults that don't have any formal uh, history with, with a financial institution, and that's the market we're addressing. Um, Rapid Credit does around um, 100,000 loans per month. Uh, average uh, amount is around $70. Uh, most of them to young people be below 45 years. Uh, a lot of them use it for their uh, micro business or for some uh, need for an urgency. And so it's one of the best known brands here in Colombia. Um, it's important that uh, a lot of people have a financial product, which is usually a bank account. So of those 36 million adults, uh, they have there, there, there are 80 million bank accounts in Colombia. And now there are 60 million e-wallets. So, so there's almost three uh, bank accounts or digital products per adult here in Colombia, which is pretty good. So it's one of the countries which has developed and and 
and and uh, adopted the digital banking uh, at least uh, as a as a wallet but still the availability of loans to to those adults is uh, way behind the average of uh, latin america uh, which is 56 percent of their to gdp so colombia has a huge huge potential and rapid credit is is working on on being one of the providers there and our brand is one of the best known brands for uh, this type of loans in colombia and talking about you're talking about availability of uh of let's say loans for for everyone uh what is rapid credit doing for so do you have like some specific uh onboarding methods uh to to, to reach to all these people or how do you differentiate yourself uh, from the different regular banks that that can can give those loans so basically you know we during these 10 years we have uh, developed uh, marketing abilities uh, where we are now attracting close to um, 3 million visitors per month to our webpage and since already the brand is so well known when people think about uh, you know this type of loans uh, gig economy workers uh, regular employees in, in in big companies and small companies and and so our marketing reach through social media and the um, the brand itself is helping us you know uh, maintain this type of, of visitors to our web page and um, the also the other important thing is we have a very big recurring customer base of uh, over 600,000 people um, and that helps us drive uh, you know our, our product going forward um, plus uh, different alliances we do with with local uh, retailers and, and other uh, aggregators that, that send us uh, traffic our way and um, currently we're also working on, on, on developing our, our product brand our product um, scope and we're now working with mastercard in in developing a, a credit card for for our, our customer base to help them uh, use our loans in, in the point of sale with uh, with a credit card uh, with Mastercard. So, you know, it's it's a marketing skill that we've developed through all these years, and um, the brand right now is very recognized here, even at the same level of one of the biggest banks in, in terms of, of of this type of loans of short term lending. That's uh, yeah. I think it's an important point to note to kind of uh, uh, show that there is a lot of recurring customers. That means usually uh, in the lending industry that if you have recurring customers, there is less default rates and and so on. So uh, having loyal customers in, in lending, it's important. And what would you say that makes you like uh, different, let's say, from the competitors? Because I understand that if there is such a big chance to to offer loans, uh, how do you differentiate from the competitors? What do you offer more that makes these customers to come back? So historically, we we were the one of the fastest in dispersing, and uh, historically also we have been one of the of, of uh, providing a bigger amount of loans. So that has you know helped customers and recurring customers especially come to Rapid Credit because of the ease of use and 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 the facility to or, or the or 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 the speedy uh, disbursements. We have also been one of, uh, having a lot of, of uh, ways of paying back, and we were the first here to introduce um, where people could roll over or, or you know, uh, extend their loans, which is a, uh, something that in, in other, especially in Europe, can be done quite easily. So, extension of, 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 of the loans or rolling them over, paying that, paying back the interest and the fees, and being able to um, to roll over. The loan after paying paying back all interest and fees um, has been important. So that way, for especially for recurring customers, um, it helps them uh, um, in their cash flow. And um, so that's I think that's that's been one of the big differentiators with with the competition. And uh, since we we've been growing, a lot of our competitors um, sometimes have to stop because of lack of funding or other other. Um, challenges and and for us you know we've been able to capture a market as as we have been you know uh, growing in, in these 10 years okay and this onboarding of the the different customers how would you uh, could you explain a bit more like what's your barriers of entrance let's say how do you evaluate your your customers to ensure that uh, 
they are basically fit to 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 make the the repayments later on i think our 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 biggest asset is the amount of information in these 10 years we've processed probably close to uh, five million uh, applications and we work closely with two of the biggest credit bureaus here so colombia that's also an important difference in colombia uh, there's two big credit reports credit bureaus here expedian and transunion most of those 36 million adults have some type of information in either one uh, here we have to report both positive and negative uh, activity so there's a lot of information at least for a big majority of customers uh, in the credit bureau and um, we're also the first to uh, work with social security information so uh, we check the the history in the credit bureau we check uh, current employer, uh, current income, and then define if a, if a customer can pay or not repay the loan, and a little bit of the history with us, how, how long has he been with us, uh, how many loans per, per year he has, and and using all that data, we have been improving our, our algorithms going forward. So uh, I, I think, um, and we've been gone, and we have gone through several cycles, uh, COVID, and, and you know, and we have shown that our our uh, process of evaluating customers has has worked in 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 the downturns too. That's that's quite interesting. Um, and going back to the this financial inclusion that we mentioned briefly at the beginning, uh, could you give us also a bit of an insight of of that is for for uh, rapid credit? As I saw, it was quite a specific uh, or a different, let's say, to what we're used to. We're used to this. Uh, shark loans like let's say no uh, um loan companies that are uh, very punishing uh, the customers and they are chasing uh, a quick buck but i saw that rapid credit has a good plan behind it and, and you're looking more uh to fit within the the, the let's say the industry and fit in a, in a more social way can you give us a a bit of explanation on that yeah uh, colombia has, has also a lot of Latin America, actually, we've exported that product, uh, uh, unfortunately. It's called gota gota in, in Spanish, meaning drip by drip. And usually these shark loans are historically been uh, uh, criminal bands or criminal gangs uh, uh, in the uh, drug industry that use uh, money from the drug um, um, proceeds and lend them to people. and. It's been a very big problem in Colombia. Um, when we have asked customers that we address, about 30% have said that they've used it or uh, at some point in time. But when when online lending of companies and fintechs came into Colombia 10 years ago, um, the amount of customers that rely on, on this shark loans has sharply reduced. Um, so we are, we are working with the government on how to uh, keep on pushing that people don't go to shark loans um, because at the end it's not even the cost but it's it's the it's that they don't create credit history in the credit bureaus and the way that they will charge you back or collect can be uh, even um, even be dangerous the way they, they collect so for a lot of the population where they don't have access to the banks uh, they usually recur to their family or to informal loans, but a lot of customers end up into shark loans, uh, especially during COVID. Uh, shark loans, you know, the percentage of use for shark loans came came back on, and especially last year with high inflation, also as it happened worldwide, at least here in Colombia, when the banks uh, closed uh, originations, um, well, the shark loans came back. So we're we're very um, keen on on helping the government, and we work. Uh, with the industry group and with the uh, government on on showing how we're helping people don't rely on shark loans, and especially creating credit history. And we have done several studies by independent um, companies where we've shown that people, once they create credit history, they have access to better loans uh, with banks. So in that sense, you know, we we can show that we are helping people with their with with their financial uh health in that sense yeah that's quite that's quite important i would say uh what about for example do you borrow more to private 
uh, lenders or it's uh, businesses or what what's your majority of your of your customers so our majority about i would say 85 percent are employees of colombia colombia has um most most of employment in colombia is by small and medium enterprises so there, there's about 2.5 million smbs uh, big companies um, um i think there's probably not more than 5,000 big companies so at the end it's small and medium uh enterprises that have their employees that come to us uh, and, uh, and about 10 15 percent are gig economy workers usually uh 50 men 50 women uh, it's almost half and half and most of them are under the age of 45. Um, basically we cover the whole of the country so um but we're mostly concentrated on, on big populated areas where there's more access to uh, internet and where people have better uh, mobile phones and, and can you know uh, do online processes much easier but we have clients all over colombia so uh, we can say that we cover the whole of the geography and uh, and, and are providing solutions all over colombia and going more in depth uh, towards your product that, that you offer, how is like a typical, let's say, loan uh, since the moment that it's given till when it's paid? And if there is a delay, uh, how do you tackle that? Do you have a debt, internal debt collection and, and, and a bit of the whole process of, of, of a loan, typical loan in, in Rappi Credit? So today we have two products, uh, Rapid Flex and Rapid Plus. So I'll start with Rapid Flex. Uh, mm -hmm. It's called Rapid Flex because it's a flexible product. Usually uh, the average customer will do a 30 day loan uh, for $70 and they'll have the ability to uh, pay fees and roll it up to four times. So at, at the end, they can get almost a, a bullet loan for four months, paying the fees every month. Um, is if in one point of time there they don't they don't pay um we give them some leeway for a couple of weeks where you know they have to do an agreement with us for you know when when can they pay and how can they pay so we work a lot on providing customers ways of paying back the loan even if if we have to give them some some installments on the way they pay back um we were the first in colombia to do direct debits into bank accounts so we we can go after a direct debit in any of those 140 million accounts that uh, i talked about at the beginning and even although we don't do it we could go to their employer and and deduct salaries if if if, if we wished it's, it doesn't go all that way but um legally we, we could go after salaries for those that are employed um on the collection side um, most of our we have almost uh, 200 people in the company uh, about one third or more are in the collection um, so we work both with our internal people with our internal processes up up to uh, 180 days of um, past two and when it's further further than that we usually work with external agencies following our procedures and we're able to bring down NPLs uh, uh, um, below 10 percent uh, if if we can you know do collection procedures for for a whole year we can bring those M NPLs even below eight seven percent mm -hmm. so I think one of our biggest um, uh, assets is the way that we have learned through all these 10 years how to collect and how to give people uh, uh, methods of paying back and and, and 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 being able to to regain their their um, their payment and then we we can then lend them again but uh yeah uh, here we have to be sometimes patient with some of these customers and knowing that they you know they, they can go into financial distress and we have to give them time to pay back and i think it's something that we have understood from from the beginning okay how do you see uh let's say the future of of uh, the lending um let's call it industry in in colombia in the next uh 10 years because i understand compared let's say to to europe where we have seen this business already for the last 20 30 years uh, i understand for colombia is much newer so you have possibility of growth and how do you see rapid credit in the next five ten years 
I think as, as has happened in Europe, I think there's going to be a consolidation of, of uh, actors. So, uh, you know, usually in every country you see three or four big players. And, and I think that's uh, happening here in Colombia. You know, we're one of those three or four players that are consolidating ourselves. Uh, I'll, I'll say that, you know, there's still a, a very big scope of developing products like the credit card, uh, embedded finance and, and uh, a lot of, of point of sale um, solutions for customers. Uh, I think the banks are going to keep on having trouble um, serving this type of customers because these customers pay, you know, it's usually they pay late for banks. It's, it's very difficult because of, of um, uh, since, since they're getting money from the public, uh, their provisioning uh, doesn't, uh, you know, uh, do well with this type of, of, of customer. So I think there's always going to be that opportunity there. Um, so um, uh, if, if as, as the government and, and, and we follow other countries where credit to GDP goes to 70%, that's going to be double of the market uh, right now. And, um, and I think there's a big opportunity there for rapid credit to, to continue servicing um, a lot of those customers that are, are are not being served by the banks and uh, are still being, you know, um, underserved or, or served by informal uh, uh, lenders and short loans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think from lender market, there's, we are, yeah. There, there's, there's two big things happening in Colombia that are important for the development of the industry. One is that the open banking has been enshrined in law, so now it's mandatory for banks to share information. So that's going to give um, a boost to the way uh, the industry serves a lot of customers that uh, you know have very thin credit credit history, or or that uh, you know. Uh, so that's going to help everybody in the industry to to have access to information from the banks. But also, uh, there's other. Apart from open banking, we're going also to open data. So uh, uh, telecom companies are going to come into or are going to have to share also information. So all this open banking um, ecosystem like has developed in Europe is going to start developing here in Colombia. And uh, so now we're working on that. On that. And the other important thing is that um, the central bank is working on an instant payment infrastructure, which will uh, help also companies like ours be able to instantly disperse into customers and into their their their, their wallets so i think that's also going to be very important as as people um, leave behind money and, and go into e-money uh, unfortunately colombia still 80 percent of payments are done in cash uh, for the large population but as this instant payment systems and infrastructures comes into place we're going to start seeing more and more people use e-wallets and e-money and that's going to give us more data to take decisions and access to those customers since they're going online with their payments. And, and that's going to bring a big, big boost to the industry, not only payment, not only payments, but lending. And so I think uh, for Colombia, it's, it's a very positive going forward. Yeah, I feel that uh, in Europe, we, we see this, that uh, in Latin America, uh, Colombia is one of the, the players that it's, it's growing very fast in terms of lots of startups, lots of fintech uh, flourishing, we could say. And it's this uh, fast, let's say, development that it's, it's uh, I would say, it's attractive for, for investors. But uh, I think that today we, we got a, um, a good view of, of a bit of Colombia and a small trip. Uh, where are you located? Are you in Bogota or? No, I'm here in Medellin, but uh, Rapid Credit has its its uh, major office in Bogota. So most of the team is in Bogota. Here in Medellin, we have our IT team, which we have more than uh, about 50 engineers working constantly on on developing and improving our platform. And so uh, part of the team is, is here in, in Medellin. So uh, yeah. I'm here in Medellin, but uh, all the all, all the major offices in Bogota. So, um, yeah. okay. So, so every yeah. invi everybody invited to come to Colombia. One of the, I guess, in tourism, it's one of the most uh, attractive countries in Latin currently, and happy to to connect here in Medellin whenever. Okay, thank you, Juan. Thank you for your your time, and uh, I hope that everyone can also understand the potential that rapid credit has the same as 
lender market did. So hopefully we can see a lot of uh, uh, flow towards towards you in terms of investments. So investors can also profit from this big development. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, the invitation is to help us continue with the inclusion of 70% of, uh, of the population in Colombia. So uh, I hope everybody helps us with this with this uh, challenge we have going forward and, and making Rapid Credit bigger than, than it already is. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Juan. Thank you. Bye.